So the other wreck I'm going to discuss uh, is the other end of Tomasic. That's uh, in the early 15th century. It's actually uh, contemporary with Singho's voyages. We found a coin on the wreck which is dated 1405 to 1424, I believe. Um, so it's just after the heyday of Tomasic. But as John has pointed out, it didn't just stop. So there's still trade going on. It's still a fiefdom of Malacca. There's still fleets operating from Tomasic. And this wreck is very different to the, uh, the Belitong wreck. Well, the Belitong wreck had 60,000 pieces. They were all Chinese. So it loaded in China. It was coming down, possibly to trade elsewhere. It's still uh, speculation where it was finally headed. I tend to think it was headed to the Middle East. Others tend to think it was headed to Java, where quite a few Changsha pieces have been found too. Uh, it was obviously lost off Belitong Island, which is closer to Sunda Strait and Java than it is to the Malacca Strait, which is the traditional route to and from the Middle East. The Bakao wreck was found in Karamata Strait, just to the east of Belitong. Um, a very different uh, vessel, very different time. Uh, here we are on our luxurious fishing boat again, anchored off this beautiful island in crystal clear water, and you can just see the edge of the reef this, this poor old vessel must have struck that reef and then come down a little bit deeper water here and sunk it. It's about 20 meters deep. And that's the site on the seabed underneath our uh, fishing boat. Again, it's a site that has been fairly extensively looted. These large jars are still there because they're heavy. They're pretty hard to get up in a small fishing boat that's trying to evade the, a couple of marine police that are in the area. So they, they've taken a lot of the smaller stuff, but the large jars remain. Uh, and then we got the great privilege of recovering those. These are made in Thailand. Uh, they're very typical Thai jar with a flared uh, mouth rim. And they probably serve the same sort of purposes on our, our vessel. There's our drum back there, our plastic drum full of water. These could have been carrying water. There's other piece pieces that have got some organic remains. As far as I know, those are organic remains still haven't been positively identified, but there's suspicion that some of them are pepper. Um, we have the fine paste ware. I noticed yesterday doing an examination of some of the different shards. This is an exceptionally high quality fine paste ware, probably from uh, the Isthmus of Kra, southern Thailand. Uh, this particular shape is called a kendi mulling, a thieves' kendi. Uh, and it's got a mammiform spout, obviously called that for obvious reasons. And these spout forms changed over time. So in the 15th century, 14th century, they took on this shape. You can actually fill this up. Inside, there's a, a funnel shape. So it's a hole in the bottom and a funnel. You fill that up. The top of the funnel is about here. So you can still fill it with liquid. But here, this is all solid. It just looks like a lid. It's not actually a lid. It's a solid piece. Uh, and many more examples. Everyone was unique and extremely fine, just a couple of millimeters thick. Uh, we have a sukatai, the traditional famous sukatai fish dish. It was also sawan kalok, both of these from Thailand. Uh, the fine paste ware from a different area in Thailand, in the south. Uh, this is the paddle decorated earthenware from all par parts of uh, Malaya, Indonesia, apart from Java. So there, there's all sorts of a wide range of goods on board this vessel. Longchuan celadon, not in large quantities, but there are a few pieces on board. And you can see this is a fairly crude example. So the Longchuan, which was in the 12th century and the 13th century, that was prized in all the archaeological sites throughout Southeast Asia, Middle East, Egypt, uh, Morocco. You find this sort of uh, Long Chuan ware, but much higher quality. It actually degraded into the fourth, 14th, late 14th, 15th century. Uh, and it was also banned. So from 1371, there was the ban of, of exports from China. But obviously, some vessels did get out and they carried some of the Long Chuan, but they didn't bring any of the blue and white. There's virtually no blue and white uh, that got out after 1371 for another 100 years or so. so. And then we got some of the interesting non-ceramic artifacts. I've taken that shot. It's taken in the museum over in Sentosa. Uh, uh, Islamic type design of a metalware ewer. There's some of the Long Chuan stuck into iron concretion and a stone pestle there. 